we're all so busy living our lives. And then suddenly something cuts through that, something often very unexpected. Pediatric trauma call, 15 minutes. A 71-year-old female with two stab wounds to the back. He was found to be in traumatic cardiac arrest. I can't feel any pulses. George's Hospital in Tutin. 24 hours, seven days a week. I love that question. What's your opening hours? St George's, London. One of Britain's busiest a &E departments, under more pressure than ever. So do you want to watch, darling, or do you want to look away? It's the worst day ever. You never know what's coming in, and you just have to be ready for anything. Gas canisters exploded, 15% burns to hands, face. In a world of uncertainty, we see a life-changing event. I'm at a and I need to get out of here, please. When patients come in, something takes over. I'm fine. I'm going to be very fine. A place where life... <laughs> Give me an A. Give me an A. <laughs> Love. OK, good lad. Well done. And loss... <laughs> ..unfold every single day. Did you enjoy the Queen's birthday yesterday? I lost the football. <laughs> All the patients you're about to see were treated in just one 24-hour period. Don't worry. We get to see people who love one another in loads of different ways. Yes. And I think you can give someone the best care in the world, but really what they want is to hold the hand of the person that they love and for them to tell them that they're going to be OK. You're my hero. Is that my nail cream? No, it's less sauce. Patrick and Evelyn. We like this at home. We'll say one thing, but like, oh yeah, I've got that. No, let me have it on my own. A bit too creamy. Oh, I feel like I'm in a spa. That's nice. I'm loving your nails. Oh, thanks. Got them done yesterday. But I'm, I'm going to see if they've got it in dark blue. I think dark blue glitter would love. Here on my 40th birthday, doing a body popping move with Angus. You know the caterpillar? It's embarrassing. It, yeah, I was rather looking back on it. Really, Christian? Yeah. I'd like a cardiologist to come and see him, please. Leading the team in resus today is AE consultant Will. Is that all right for you to just give them a ring? If they've got any questions, I'll just say. Get them to ring me. Perfect. I feel very lucky that not just I get to work in an emergency department, but I get to work in this emergency department. The emergency department could be viewed as a bit like a family, and I think actually the hospital as a whole could be viewed as a, as a, a big family. Hello. People get on. There's a lot of friendly relationships amongst the staff. What time did everybody leave? About nine-ish. I think that's really important, because the work that we do is not necessarily the easiest thing. Sounds good. Doesn't sound that safe. It does sound People understand we're all in the same boat. I think that's one of the real strengths of this hospital. But Will's in charge. Will, are we thinking about meeting in CT? If you're leading any team... Should we get him off the scoop? Your job isn't really to tell people what to do. Your job is to give people space to do what they know to do. Can I borrow your tubes again? Of course. Thank you. But when it comes down to making decisions, especially the difficult decisions, you have to be able to not only make those decisions, but take responsibility for them. And not just personally, but to unburden the members of your team with that responsibility. To know that this is your call, and that lets them get on with their job. been a crash on the A31 in Farnham. Two vehicles are involved in the collision. The road eastbound towards Farnham is shut. What's the new one? Trauma call, RTC. 
Yeah. How bad? Tower of Listen Jury. Blood pressure 95 over 60. Oh, yeah. GCS 13. Hems air. GCS what? 13. 13? 13, yeah. With no head injury and that blood pressure. OK, can we put that as a code red, please? Female major trauma or code red, 15 minutes. If you're declaring somebody as a code red trauma, that means that you have evidence that they're bleeding to death and they warrant another level of response. Hi, and they're coming by helicopter. Can you activate the helipad? A 79-year-old woman is being airlifted to St George's after being involved in a road traffic collision in Surrey. St George's, 88, 10 minutes. When emergency services arrived on the scene, they had to cut her from the car. Well, are you running this code red? So the thing that's raising my heckles is with her age, that could be a significantly low blood pressure for her. Patients who've been involved in serious road traffic collisions, you need to recognise what injuries are common. Can I ask you the first x-ray you take? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Pelvis. No. If you have a big bleed from an artery into your pelvis, that's very difficult to get on top of. The blood at the moment is in the fridge. It can quite easily be fatal. The key is concurrent activity. Things don't happen one at a time. As the patient arrives in St George's, her family have been informed of the accident. It was a lovely sunny day, and I would normally go up the dual carriageway, but I went the back way. I went over the A31, and I saw there was a really massive tail back, and I just thought, well, I'm glad I didn't go that way. Pretty gross slice. I got home, and I first thing I did was make a cup of tea and phone mum. She said she was going walking in the morning, that she would be back. She was going to pick up my daughter from school, and she didn't answer the phone. And I thought, oh, that's strange, because you know, so um, reliable, so constant. The phone rang. A gentleman saying, "I'm from Surrey Police." Something's happened to your mother. She's been involved in a serious car collision. Yeah. <sighs> I realised why the tailback was all the way down the A31. Just to let you know, there's a code red that's just landed on the helipad. My heart sank. Yeah, it's um, devastating, yeah. When I knew that uh, Mum had been involved in the car accident, it just occurred to me I've got to get home. I've got to get. I've got to drop everything, no matter what it is. I've got to drop everything and get home and uh, give Mum support. The thought that Mum might not make it—it it was terrible. Okay, guys, this is Judy. She's seventy-nine. She's turned right across a dual carriageway where she's been T-boned by a car coming down the dual carriageway. It's unclear what speed she was hit at. She was reported to be unconscious on the arrival of the first ambulance crew, but by the time we got to her, she had a GCS of 13 with a motor score of six. Injuries top to toe, she's got a head injury with a wound. She's got bruising across the chest and the abdomen consistent with a seat belt. She's got a closed tib fib injury on the left and a hematoma on the left forearm. We're querying a pelvic injury. Has she got collar? Has she got an effective collar on? Yeah, collar's on. Then just lose the blocks. OK, Judy, I'm Rob. I'm one of the doctors. I'm going to be examining your head to toe, OK? No distended neck veins. Looking at the abdomen, it has a bruise consistent with a seat belt. Pelvic binder looks to be in a good position. There is some bruising and abrasion in the left groin crease. The pelvis is asymmetrical. The left side is significantly higher than the right. So the pelvis is as asymmetrical? It's asymmetrical. Is, is the bruising you're describing, is it Desco sign or is it just local bruising? It's possibly local bruising. It could be, it could be an internal deglove, I don't know. Heart sounds one and two audible at the apex with a pansystolic murmur. Guys, can we just get the pelvic x-ray done? I think she's bleeding into her pelvis. 
very weak radio pulse. X-ray Bay 6. Can we have a unit of blood stat, please? We've got no radio pulse and a pelvic fracture. Doctors must give Judith a blood transfusion in an attempt to stop her going into cardiac arrest. Your pelvis is a big bony ring and it's also got an awful lot of blood vessels associated with it, lots of veins and some very big arteries. And when that pelvis is broken and that ring becomes unstable, because of where they are, it's not something that you can just press on to stop the bleeding. So everybody thinks about the blood on the floor and about there being lots of blood everywhere. But actually, the majority of people who bleed to death do so inside their body cavities. Give her a unit. Call to Teresa urgently, please. All right, guys, we've got a lady with a confirmed pelvic fracture who's cardiovascularly unstable. We've done all the interventions we need to do here. Let's go. Resuscitation can continue in scan. It's 11 minutes since 79-year-old Judith was airlifted to St George's, having been involved in a road traffic collision. So that's the second unit of blood running in there as well. And then the resuscitation will continue in CT. Doctors are concerned about fractures and internal bleeding in her pelvis and have given her an emergency blood transfusion to stabilise her. If you have somebody who's bleeding to death, um, it might not be the right decision to take them to a CT scanner because your aim is to make them better. And the CT scanner doesn't do that. It just provides you with information. So to persevere with getting that information, it is a gamble. But if you believe that that is in that person's best interests, then you make that decision. Story. She was the driver, restrained. Yeah. When she lost consciousness, she was rapid X. Yeah. Judith's family are travelling from their homes in Surrey to St George's. Yeah, she was a stay at home mum. She meant to kick us out into the garden and give us a one of Dad's sort of offices, mess tins and a blob of lard, a pack of sausages, and we'd, we'd build campfires. I had two brothers and a mum and a dad. I think they'd met when they were 12 years old and had always stayed together. Mum, she kept her home. She cooked. I think she got on a cookery course and used to, you know, do sort of call and blur cookery, um, which my brother really enjoyed. So you get lots of casserole things. Mum was the one to run the family, uh, mainly because Dad was so busy at work. He was a, a partner of quite a large firm of solicitors. A marvellous man, very placid and laid back. A really lovely way to grow up. Happy family. So, where we are is she's had those two units of blood. Yeah. That's yeah. her blood pressure. It's come up with that filling. So, the next five minutes, if she falls in a heap, let's find out where, if anywhere, she is bleeding from. Yeah, OK, fine. All right. It's an inevitable part of life that, you know, one day you know, we will lose our parents. But you think, you know, not just yes. It would be devastating, you know, to hear that news. OK. Thanks. One or two. Uh, one, please. I don't think it actually does anything to have two. I think I'm just greedy. I never doubted that it was anything other than greed. Mm. Here. What? <laughs> Where else do you want me to put it? I don't know. <sighs> Thanks. A 
80-year-old Mohammed has come to A&E after falling at home and hitting his head. You're going to take a picture of us, three. He's accompanied by his son, Salah, daughter, Naz, and grandson, Hadi. You know, there's one thing you have to remember is keep fit. That's the key to life. It's really changed. You were going that way. I was going that way. You've gone. Mohammed. Hello. Hi. Please take a seat. So. Sorry, I know there's lots of us, but it's just um. Don't worry. Was that youth um, festival today? Festival today. Youth today, and everyone at home. Everyone, been, the whole family's together. Whole family together. We come from like Birmingham, from London, Ken. Birmingham, Ken. Mum's mm -hmm. made a big dish of biryani, and um, food on the table. We ended up in A and E. Eid is basically celebration time, like Christmas. Day when everyone's together, and it's so nice. All day there's somebody coming in and out. It's food, food, food. What happened today? He fell backwards onto a brick. That it hurt me. And, and you felt oh, okay. Where do you feel the pain now? A lot of pain. Eh? A lot of pain. A lot of pain. Okay. Do you mind to take the glasses off? My dad, my lovely dad. Close your eyes. Is the nicest man I know. Can you keep like this? He's the head of a very close knit family. Show me your teeth. There's a lot of us. So we will need to do a scan of the brain. Okay? I'm coming back to you. Mum Dad's house is like the headquarters of all the family members, 50 plus of us. That's where everybody gets together. Nas? Hmm? Dad's in a lot of pain here. He's the roof of the house. And imagine if the roof is not there. And what does a house look like? That's it, really. I mean, you can't really explain it than that about my dad. Mohammed will be taken for a CT scan to see if he sustained any serious head injuries. A 56-year-old male has fallen from a tree onto concrete and is being rushed to St George's by ambulance. Patients who have fallen from height, the assumption is that they have multiple injuries. And it's all depending on how high you fell and what you landed on. Fall from height, loss of consciousness on scene, seizure, and then amnesia. But the worst scenario is that you fall head first and you land on your head because that often comes with a very serious head injury or a spinal injury. An emergency doctor treated the man at the scene and his wife has been informed. That particular day, when Russ had gone to work, I thought, I don't know when he's working, I haven't asked him. I can remember sending him a text saying, I love you. Just come home to have my lunch. The phone rang and it was a policewoman telling me Russ has fallen off a ladder, he's hit his head, he's unconscious. My heart sunk, I just thought this is it, I just, I almost felt I knew this would happen one day. It was horrible, really horrible. I tried to remain calm for the girls who were both hysterical. It was like full on panic. Like my whole body just started shaking because you never expect to get that. Your dad's had an accident at work. I just collapsed down to the floor. And I was just saying like, just tell me he's okay, tell me he's okay. To me, there's only one reason why someone isn't reassuring you and that's if they can't. At 
26, I had no plan to lose my dad. But that day I was like, oh my God, my whole life is about to change. Ready, steady, move. Right. This is Ross. We fell out of a tree earlier. Probably about four metres. Oh. No particular reason for you. He doesn't remember before the event. He doesn't actually remember the event. So I'm assuming he's been unconscious for some period of time. He's got left-sided chest pain. He's got bilateral air entry. He's a bit anxious. He's on some medication for anxiety. Should we get him off the scoop? Yeah. Ready, steady, oh, brace. Oh. Yeah. And if we just attach the monitoring, we'll get him round to CT. Oh. Still no recollection of what happened. Uh, no one's up a murder. So when you're assessing somebody who can't remember the events of the accidents, it could infer that they've, they've had a blow to the head significant enough for them to have some amnesia around the events. Hello, sir. Oh, I'll well, it could be an undiagnosed serious medical condition. Any abdominal pain, sir? Oh. But depending on the state of the patient, it might have to be deprioritised until you can address their, their traumatic injuries. Sorry? Get that looked at when he clear his spine. We all got in the car, and at that point, I'm thinking, is he paralysed? Is he brain damaged? And it was just that absolute panic of, I don't know how to deal with this because I've never had to. Just gonna move you over. It's been 12 minutes since Russ arrived in A&E after falling four metres from a ladder onto concrete while cutting branches from a tree. Doctors are concerned he has no recollection of the accident and have sent him for CT scans of his brain, spine and internal organs. The most important thing in Russ's life and his family, particularly his daughters, he likes to be a big part of their lives. I think the very first night when we brought Sarah home, he said, right, you get up and feed her and I'll put some toast on and make a cup of tea. Come on, Mum, we can do that. I think that only lasted one night. Breathe in and hold your breath. I've got so many memories of him just always getting involved in everything that me and my sister did. It's magic. At a playground, he'd be coming on with us and jumping around like an absolute lunatic. <laughs> Was he an embarrassing dad sometimes? Oh my God, so much. He, he can be so embarrassing. Dad is the joker of the family. And I think that's probably what made him such a good dad is he was never scared to just make himself look silly if it made me and my sister laugh. He is the sort of person that you go to when you know that you need to feel better about something. Or you just need to feel like that little girl again when he gives you a cuddle and you just think, I don't care that I'm 26, I'm just going to feel six for five minutes while he makes me feel like actually nothing can hurt me, nothing can happen because I'm with my dad. Russ will now be taken to resus for further tests, whilst doctors wait to see if his CT scans reveal any potentially life-changing injuries. His family have now arrived in A&E. I think people would be shocked to hear that even though he is so jokey and happy. He has a lot of anxiety about his health. For him, laying there, completely helpless. <sighs> That's Dad's biggest nightmare. So that's uh, 
broken. Earlier, Judith was involved in a serious road traffic collision near Farnham in Surrey. Doctors have given her an emergency blood transfusion to try and stop her internal bleeding, which they believe is a result of a serious pelvis injury. The pelvic fracture is life-threatening. Life-threatening? Yeah. My children adore my mum. She's always been part of their life. She would stand in the porch and lift her body weight up and do a sort of pirouette kick and make us laugh. And we'd always like, whoa, steady, you know, <laughs> you're getting on, don't do that, you'll break something. She loves walking. She's probably rambled her way around the world. I think it might have been maybe Mexico. Some bandits, um, you know, sprung out on them and obviously wanted money and you name it. I would have been inclined to just hand everything over, but my mum dived into a bush <laughs> and hid. <laughs> so, um, yeah, a strong woman. She lives on her own for 23 years. Independence is, is everything. Walking, um, travelling, um, did give her a lease of life after my father passed away, yeah. Sort of being able to walk is her life. Doctors now have the preliminary results of Judith's CT scans. So she's not had any further blood now for 20, 25 minutes. Okay. Right, she's holding. So I think she fits neatly into our responder, responder. category. Yeah. So it's probably that she has bled, but is no longer bleeding. Doctors have managed to stabilise Judith's internal bleeding and can now focus on any potential injuries to her brain, spine and internal organs. You've broken some bones in your spine and you've broken your pelvis. So they're, they're quite painful injuries, so we'll be able to get on top of the pain, but it might take us a little while to catch up, OK? How long am I going to be here? It'll be a while before you get your full mobility because of your pelvis injury, OK? Serious injuries in elderly trauma patients do carry that extra burden that they're going to have a prolonged recovery. The haematoma will need to... And the aim is always to get them back as much function as you possibly can. We're waiting for someone to look through the CT scan that you've had with a very fine tooth cone to make sure we haven't missed any injuries. OK, and once that's happened, I'll get you up to one of our wards. You will have to come into hospital, yeah. OK? Um, so we can look after you a bit. Where are you? You're in St George's Hospital. Oh, All right. OK. Mum's always had um, independence. So to realise she's injured and that it might be a permanent change. I honestly didn't know that she would be walking again um, with a broken back. Thanks, lovey. Thank Honest you. to God, you make a nice coffee. The only fish I miss is about with is salmon. So I just get the knife and pair it. Never mind, don't worry, Papa. Oh, no. That's me. Security. <laughs> not, not coffee, please. Eighty-year-old Mohammed has had a CT scan of his brain after falling over and hitting his head before his Eid family feast. Hello. Do you think it's worse or better than before? Be better than before. OK. Doctors are now carrying out further tests to establish the extent of his injuries and whether there's an underlying cause for his fall. Can you tell me their name? Saleh and Naz. Good. Your date of birth? May 1936. All right, perfect. Well done. Dad, he's from Pakistan. He came here in 1962. Must have been very brave. I mean, can you imagine going somewhere and you've, you haven't got an image? I mean, there's no TVs, was there? I mean, in those days, hardly. There was only a radio. But he just landed. 
We were the only Asians in our street. I mean, we still are the only Asians in our street. 50 years he's been in that house. He just wanted a future for his family, his kids. And I think he's really succeeded in that. Hello, sir. Hi, sir. Sure. My name is Lindsay, one of the nurses here. Oh. Do you mind if I unbutton this a little bit so I can put some stickers on your chest? All right. It's just to make sure that you have a heart. Childhood was an amazing memory for me. Dad, he'd always want to make us laugh. Six o'clock, when he used to get home, we'd all run to him. Seven children. Sorry about my cold hands. We used to tickle him a lot. <laughs> and then he used to do that to us, and he was trying to get us, up, you know, see who'd win, basically. And um, Dad would always win. He's a strong man. Good news, you have your heart. Lovely. It's not made of stone. <laughs> He's my idol, you know, like someone that I think, if you want to be like someone, you know, be like him, use him as an example. Sure, scratch. Education, home, family unit, you know, gave us that backing. I wish I could even be 10% of what he's done. All done. Thank you. You know, he's always smiling. And you know what he's been going through, he's, you know, his episodes of illnesses. And he still keeps going. OK. Earlier today, 56-year-old Russ fell four metres from a ladder whilst cutting back branches on a tree, but has no recollection of what happened. He's been joined by his wife, daughters and extended family. Should we take this mask off? Yeah. Oh. We're just waiting for that formal report. Um, so it looks like he's broken at least one rib. You've got a tiny bit of air around one of your lungs. Yeah. And not big enough that I would put a drain in it. Um, you've got to cut to the back of your head, which we'll sort out once we get this collar off, but we need to make sure the spine's OK. Um, do you remember anything that happened to you? My feeling is that the question we need to be asking is why you don't. If somebody's fallen off something, there might not be a clear explanation for that. And it might be that that person has had a kind of medical event. Have they fainted? Have they had a problem with their heart? Have they, have they had a, a seizure before their injury? Funny old diary. So you don't remember anything at all? You don't remember the moment you fell? Just remember waking up at the end. It did seem odd, he didn't remember. In the back of your mind, you're thinking, is there something else going on in his brain that's been there for a while that we didn't know about? It was scary. They're just going to go into your nose, all right? It's just a little bit of a spill. I think I'll eat it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <a bit> <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dad is the sort of person that, even if he's feeling inside, like, really down, he is life and soul, even though it's us that get to see, like, the real him. For a long time, Dad was definitely hiding how he was really feeling. I'm really sorry. Why are you sorry? you fell off a ladder? Yeah, yeah. He went through depression and, and a lot of anxiety. I can't think of it main worry is that he will die of something sudden, that he won't get to see us get any older. What are they all going to do if I'm not there? Because, obviously, in everyday life, the dad is, like, the protector. Russell's full night of tree. Doctors now have Russ's full CT report. He has no spine or neck injuries, but multiple broken ribs and a head wound. Oh, yeah. I had a look at your CT scans yeah. and your neck looks OK. I think it was when he was around nine years old, his dad came home from work, not feeling too well, went up to the bedroom, I think, maybe to just lie down and had a heart attack there and then. It was pretty quick. 
he died before he even got taken to hospital. Dad didn't even go to the funeral because he was only nine years old. So my dad's last memory of his dad is he came home from work like normal, really normal family evening, went up to lay down and that was it. He never saw him again. It'll sit you up a little bit. Since that day that his dad died, he's been waiting for the same thing to happen to him. We're just going up to the ward now. Russ will be taken to a ward where doctors will investigate any potential causes for his fall and his loss of memory. She had two of red cells. Blood pressure got better. How are they treating her? I'd say an operation. Judith came into A&E with internal bleeding following a road traffic collision in Surrey. She's now stabilised, but scans have revealed fractures to her spine, pelvis, ribs and wrists. Hello, anyways. Specialist doctors analysing Judith's scans have identified a potential bleed on her brain. If it wasn't for trauma, I'd say this was long-standing stuff. However, they're unsure whether it's due to the accident or an age-related disease. OK. Modern trauma care, we liberally use CT scans. And certainly with a more ageing population, it's not that unusual nowadays for us to find something on that scan that isn't a result of the, the patient's injuries. Judith, do you know where you are now? Do you remember? Brighton. No. You're in St George's. St George's. OK. In London. Um. <laughs> I think along with the fact that we're living longer now, um, one of the, the disease processes we see a lot more of um, are things like dementias and, and other illnesses that impair your cognition. And it, it sort of robs people of who they are. And it robs the people around them of their loved ones, sometimes before that they have physically passed away. The person that they once knew is, is barely there or radically different. And it's, it's quite a terrifying disease. It's quite an awful and devastating situation to be in. She has abnormalities on her CT head. Could be blood, but it could just be chronic changes for someone of her age. Yeah. It must have been particularly hard on my mother my father had a degenerative illness, Alzheimer's disease, from probably mid-40s, shockingly. Um, and he was um, 58, I think, when he died. So very young. One day, I can remember talking to him at the door and he was really pleased to see me and I think I held his hand and gave him a kiss and um, he started talking to me about his children but I was his child um, and at that point I sort of knew that it was, you know, gone beyond the point of any form of return. I would have liked to have always had him in my life, you know, I'd have liked to have known him as an adult. You know, he never met my children. I feel very vague. Very vague? OK. I think your daughter's on the way. Shouldn't be too much longer, hopefully. I've told you a few times where you are today. Can you remember St George's Hospital? OK. for that scenario to happen again is to go through that all over again. We'd just be like, no, God, please, no. You know, not for her. Hmm. Judith is being taken to a ward where specialist doctors will monitor her brain injury and assess whether the fractures to her spine and pelvis need surgery. When you're a child, you view your parents as 
indestructible. Your dad's always the strongest man in the world. Your mum's always the best cook. And I think part of growing into adulthood is you stop idolising your parents and you get to know them as human beings and you love them for completely different reasons. And then as they get older, I can certainly imagine a sense of fulfilment at being able to provide care and support for your parents. In a way, you're sort of returning some of the love that they've given to you when they did that for your entire childhood and brought you up to be the person you are today. Four, isn't it? Or is it five? It's like five now. Oh, happy Eid Mubarak. 80-year-old Mohammed came into A&E when he hit his head after a fall at home. Oh, you haven't eaten, have you? No. Do you want someone to come with some briyani? <laughs> Doctors are now analysing his scans and tests to see what the next stage of his treatment should be. So, Nani? It could have been ten times worse. That could have been it for us. Could have been it. Ten years ago, I went into A&E with Dad. Spent the whole day there. They kept doing lots of tests on him. And then they told us that he had kidney cancer. It spread. There's small growth still in the lungs. It's hard because... Um, Dad's still trying for us. And he's really trying for us. It's so nice I put Dad's shoes on today. It's a lovely feeling. I don't think it's fair on anyone to have any health issues, to be honest. Nobody wants anyone to go through pain or see somebody going through pain. Shoes done. But illness can bring people closer and help you realise who is actually there for you in life. They want to see Nanabu. Some of Mohammed's grandchildren have arrived in A&E with their grandmother's homemade biryani from the Eid festival feast. It's cruel because of his health, but he's got a lot of support. You know, he's created that support through his love. Um, and everything that he's done for us, you know, it's now our time to give that back to him. What we are doing today for our parents, you know, hopefully one day our children we hopefully we'll have to do for us. You just can't do enough for your parents, to be honest. that you're not in a wheelchair, you're lucky that you didn't die. I'm still here, I'm still annoying my kids. If someone said to me years ago, this is going to happen to you, but you won't worry and be anxious anymore, I'll be back up that ladder. I'll be back up there. Sometimes you can be sidetracked and just get on with your day-to-day -day running of life. But what it's done now, you think twice about what you're doing and how that could affect that time with your parents.
for us, every day is a bonus, every hour is a bonus. And you just can't believe he's still alive. How proud of your children are you? I'm very proud. Thanks God. I'm very proud of them. I have good children. Through each visit, I didn't know what the outcome was going to be. You know, is there brain damage? Will there be brain damage? Will she be able to walk again? I didn't know if I would have mum back. Yeah. When I came home, everybody said, Oh, golly, you're still alive. <laughs> what makes a good walk? Recently, the colours and also the spring, uh, the bluebells. Spectacular, I in good weather, huh, not in the rain. <laughs> Someone said, oh, why, why don't you wear the cowboy hat? I was like, it brings me good luck. So far, it hasn't proven well. <laughs> Hello, St George's. Motorcyclist versus two cars. Has got quite a few major injuries. They said, you need to prepare yourself. Most concerning injury is the skull fracture. Suddenly, I'm just thinking, they're going to tell me he's not going to make it. He's gone. Can you open your eyes? 